I find when it comes to sprint finishes, I run out of legs. Uh, first, what's the best way to handle a sprint, i.e. positioning and when to go? And then secondly, what's the best strength training uh, to become stronger as a sprinter? Okay, Chris, that's a fantastic question. So the first one is, what's the best way to handle uh, sprint finishes? Well, I'll run through this because it's, uh, it's uh, fairly technical. The first thing to understand is that you need to be uh, at the sprint finish at the end uh, fairly fresh. So with a lot of criterium, and I assume you mean criterium racing, uh, if you're meaning road racing, that's a little bit different, but with criterium racing during the summer here in Australia, and I assume it's exactly the same all around the world, because the races are graded, and if you do an exceptionally good ride, you generally get promoted up into the grades. So most of the grades are fairly evenly matched. There may be a few people sandbagging and that sort of thing. And what that means is that to get up a grade, you need to do a few sprint finishes to uh, you get a few placings and a few, a few sprint finishes. Or secondly, you jump into a breakaway group and do an epic solo, or, or do an epic solo and breakaway on your own and win that race. And those two things will automatically, in most cases, depending on the handicapper and the club that you're racing with, will you know mean that you'll be going up into a grade very soon, if not immediately, in the next race. So that means that most of the coming back to that, it means that most of the um, most of the people racing in your grade are generally about the same sort of fitness. Okay. So unfortunately, it means that most of what happens during that race, if it's an hour criterion, 45 minute criterion, is not really relevant. It's really what's happening at the end of the race, the last three laps. So you'll notice that there are a lot of attacks and, and I could talk about race tactics and I will have a specific webinar to talk about race tactics. But most uh, races in the criterion, it generally comes down to the last three laps. So positioning is really important. And uh, the next thing I need to talk about is uh, when it comes to positioning is understanding uh, differentials of speed and um, positioning. So if you're in a sprint finish and you're third wheel and you come out of the corner third wheel and then you ride to the finish line and say the average speed of riding to the finish line is uh, 40, 45 kilometers an hour. Let's just pick a number, 45 kilometers an hour, right? Your third wheel you start the sprint, you're all one, two, three, your third wheel, you're all doing uh, 45 kilometers an hour. If you come out third wheel and you're all doing 45 kilometers an hour, then you're going to finish one, two, three, right? So in order to you for you to win that sprint, you need to be able to ride at 46 or 47 kilometers an hour to come over everybody at the end and finish the sprint. And what sprinters do is they basically line themselves up behind, you know, they're always thinking, who's going to be my lead out man? Who or woman, and they that's what they're looking for, so that they can basically have that person take them to the last 100 meters or 50 meters to the line and then jump over the top of them. And sprinters have this fantastic ability of being able to tell you know, three pedal strokes take three bike links out of you, they have this awesome strength. All right, so I understand that positioning is really important and and the speed, you know, it's, it's incredible. The other thing is the, the gap. So, you know, we love doing this at some of our training courses. We set up the weakest rider, we handicap riders into a uh, 750 meter sprint and we send off the weaker riders first. And we give them a little bit of, you know, they're riding quite slow and we give them a little bit of time and then we set off the faster riders. And it's amazing how the faster riders, if you give the slower riders a little bit of an edge, the faster riders can't catch them because the time that it takes to get from the last corner to the sprint finish is not long enough for them to get enough speed up to, even if they're going maximum, to overtake the uh, slower riders. So uh, that's why epic solos are fantastic when you win them. I used to love to go from 750. So, so the next thing you need to look at is uh, how long you can sprint for. And look, I was never a very powerful sprinter. I was not one of these sprinters that could come over people right at the end of the sprint. You know, I'd be the person coming out third wheel of a corner, and then I'd be third wheel at the finish line, you know. So it's just, for me, what I used to do is I would go early. I'd go 750 meters to go. And at 750 meters, none of the sprinters are going because they, they can only come over the top of you in the last 100, 100 meters, last 50 meters. So I used to go long. Uh, and um, 
all the other sprint, all the sprinters that were going to challenge me, they'd be looking for the wheel. Who's going to lead me out to chase down this guy so I can come over the top of everybody at the end of the race? Now, if the timing's right, remember, you know, that scenario around this last rider, if I got enough of a jump and got enough distance between me and the main group and they and they hesitated, they backed it off a little bit and waited, then there was a good chance I was going to win that sprint. So there's lots of strategies, even if you aren't a good sprinter, to finish a uh, sprint finish. So uh, I hope that answers some of your questions, Chris. Okay, so the next thing is, what's the best strength training to become a stronger sprinter? All right, so there's two things. Obviously, the Matt Brindle stuff is really going to help you with your general fitness, but then you need to get into doing some explosive stuff with some heavy weights. Uh, and generally, the Matt Brindle stuff that we've got with some heavy weights doing more explosive movements. In fact, later on in the Matt Brindle um, functional strength program, we get into that explosive stuff. A lot of it uh, is not actually unlocked in the members area at the moment. You'll see it as a grayed out images. That content is actually there. But just understand that explosive uh, pyrometric type strength training um, at the gym is fantastic for sprinters. It's not, and, and don't get me wrong, and don't take this out of context, because a lot of people go, oh yeah, so if I do high intensity, super explosive sprint training type weight training, that's going to help me with my endurance riding, or it's going to help me climb hills faster. No, don't, don't get the two confused. It's important to understand that that sprint training that you do with the explosive pyrometric stuff is specifically for sprinters. It's not going to help you climb hills faster, unless they're a sprinter. So if they're a short hill, steep hill, then that's a sprinter's hill, and that'll help you with sprinting up short hills. But it's not going to help you on long drags like you're getting out of the Peaks Challenge. So the, so the other thing is to do hill sprints and to practice your sprinting out on the road. <clears throat> so there's plenty of ways you can do that. Uh, generally, it doesn't really matter what gradient the hill is. You can do longer sprints on uh, a 300 meter sprint on a longer 3% uh, gradient, or you can do shorter sprints on a steeper gradient, 7 or 8%, and, uh, and that can be you know 100 meters. And there's a whole protocol around uh, how we can develop that sprint going from doing initially starting off a standing start type sprint efforts where you're in a big gear, you roll up to a line that you've marked, uh, you can do this on a velodrome or out on the road, make sure you do it where it's safe, uh, you don't want to be sprinting in the back of the car, and the standing start stuff you do is you roll up, you know, almost at walking pace, in a big gear, you get on top of the gear, usually takes you about, you know, it's a big chain ring, the 13, 14 cog, uh, it'll take you about 50 meters, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit less to get on top of that gear. The first three or four pedal strokes just feel like you're just not on top of it at all. And then you finally ramp it up. So that'll build the initial strength. And then from there, we progress into building sprinting. So we, we take those efforts, we do longer efforts, and then we progressively roll them down to shorter efforts on steeper gradients. So I hope that gives you some answers around or some stuff. Look, certainly ask the question in the forum, and I can give you some workouts excuse me, that you can do that work through that. So Chris, ask that question in the forum. I'll deliver some workouts for you that you can do in the forum, and we can work through that for you. Um, the Criterium program touches on it, and so does the Road Racer program as well. So some of those efforts that I've talked about, and the progression too.